Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy, and today I'd like to take a look at an older game. Uh, this game is The Ark of the Covenant, and by older game, I simply mean that it is actually 10 years old this year. It's been out for a decade, so uh, you probably will have a hard time finding it, although it is out there. I was able to find some copies, a little pricey, but you may be able to find some deals out there on eBay uh, or something to that effect. So, main reason for this review is to show you a game that you probably have not heard of or has simply flown under your radar so that if you see it in a store, you can pick it up if it suits your fancy. So, uh, Ark of the Covenant, based on Carcassonne, a very well uh, critically acclaimed uh, game by uh, Klaus Jürgen Reda. And uh, let's take a look at it. Now, to set up a game of uh, the Ark of the Covenant, you uh, simply place the starting tile. The starting tile is delineated by being an offset color, as you can see here, and you place that in the middle of the board, as so. And then the rest of the tiles are shuffled and placed in uh, piles so that all players have easy access to them. You place a scoring track off to the side uh, so that uh, it doesn't get in the way of the board. The uh, actual Ark of the Covenant piece will stay off the board until it comes into play later on. Each player places one of their meeples in the zero spot on the starting track to be their scoring marker, and then they take the rest. Um, you, uh, each player will have uh, seven uh, meeples to play the game with. One is over here on the scoring track, and then there is one that is the Prophet. He is a wee bit larger than the rest of them, as you can see there, and so uh, he will be used to score a city for double points at some point throughout the game. So we'll start with blue player. The rules state that the first, the last, per, the person who read their Bible the last goes first. Um, so you can use that or use some other method, whatever you'd like uh, to determine starting player. Now a little house rule that I usually use uh, at the beginning of any Carcassonne game is I actually deal out tiles to all of the players so that they can use uh, the time that other people have to look at their tile and go from there. So the first person will take their tile and you have to place your tile so that it is matching all the other parts of the board. Okay, so if he places it here, that would not be good because it's there's a road here and there's no road here, so that can't go. This would be a legal placement because the two fields match. Um, this would also be a legal placement and that would actually finish that city there. So it just de it's determined by what the person wants to do. Uh, blue will go ahead and place here. Now, whenever you place a meeple, it has to be on the tile that you just played. It cannot be on any other tile other than the one you just played. So there are basically three different places you can place. You can place here in a city, or you can place it face down that's just to denote that it's in the field and it's going to stay there until the rest of the end of the game. And then if your tile has a road on it, you could uh, place on the road, but since there's no road here, we're just gonna go in there. Now, at the, at the end of the turn, the, the rules actually say you draw the tile at the beginning of your turn, but in order to keep the, 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 the game moving, at the end of the turn, after he places, he will draw a new tile and be able to look at that later on. So green player goes and he takes a look at this tile. He's going to go ahead and place right here just like this. And then he likes uh, the look of that city. He's going to try and put his profit there. Now the profit will score double points, but you can only use the profit once in the game frame. Okay, so the game would continue that way. He will place his uh, token there, and that finishes the city, and so he will get two four points. So blue scores his city and moves four points. Now, at this point, when the first city is scored, the Ark of the Covenant comes into play. The Ark of the Covenant can be placed anywhere on the board um, as determined by the person who finished the city, who placed the tile that finished the city. So uh, let's see here. We're going to go ahead and put 
the Ark of the Covenant there. Now, this presents a new option for the player's turn. Now that the Ark is actually in play, you have the options now of placing a follower after you place a tile, placing a follower, moving the Ark, or taking no action. If you choose to move the Ark, you would be able to move it up to five squares. No backtracking is allowed, however, and every time it passes a meeple, that player scores one point. So if I were to move it this way, blue would get one point. Okay, so that is another option now available that the arc is on the table. So game would continue. Whenever a road is, is finished, for example, this person played right there. After they played this tile, they played right here on that road, but that road is completed, so he would automatically score. And roads score one point for each tile that consists in that road. So that's one and two. So yellow would score two points. Now that a larger city has scored, we want to go through that, especially since the profit is here. Now, the profit scores double points for that city. All right, so that profit is going to score two, four, six, eight, ten, because scrolls are worth a bonus of two points. So they're going to score ten plus this, he doubles it, so that is 20 points. And when he scores, he is removed from the game because he cannot be used again. But green would score 20, 20 points for that, which seems heavy-handed, but that city could have been a lot larger. So that was probably a good idea that yellow played that there. And when he played that, he'll claim that road as well. When a temple finishes, which is what this tile is here, a temple is finished when it is surrounded uh, on the top, bottom, and left and right, which makes a cross pattern, okay? So when that finishes, the person that has the most meeples in this cross pattern gets seven points. If there is a tie, then they both get seven points. Ties are always friendly in this game of Carcassonne, where if there is a tie, both people get all of the points. They don't share the points. So here, uh, both blue and green get seven points. Instead of placing a meeple, I'm going to move the Ark of the Covenant, and I will go one, two, three, four. So the P, every one that it passes, and wherever it lands, will get a point. So that's two points for blue. And the game would continue in this fashion until all of the tiles are gone and have been placed. At that point, fields are scored. Fields are scored this way. You would take and look at the field where that shepherd is, and you would count the number of sheep and then subtract any wolves that are still in that pasture. Blue uh, got out scot-free here. He has uh, five sheep, but no wolves, so he would score 10 points for this. Uh, over here, red would score uh, two points times two, for this small field, so that would be four points there. Yellow would score uh, two, four points. Red would score two points for that one right there, and so forth and so on. So it would be the number of sheep minus wolves times two. Also, any unfinished temples will score uh, whoever has the majority of meeples on the cross pattern that they will score three points for an unfinished temple. If there is a tie, both people 
uh, get, get the three points. Remaining cities that have not been finished get one point for every tile. Roads that have not yet been finished get one point for every tile. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. And that is Ark of the Covenants. Not that there needed to be an alternative to Carcassonne, but this is a biblically themed alternative to Carcassonne uh, or an addition to Carcassonne. If you enjoy playing Carcassonne, you will enjoy this game, even if you're not biblically inclined, so to speak. Um, the idea of the game is clean. The uh, implementation of the theme is clean and not overwrought. That's one of the things that I really liked about it. Sometimes uh, Christian-themed games, for all of their good intentions, um, go overboard and become very heavy-handed on the implementation of the theme, and, and that's not necessary, people. So Ark of the Covenant actually does a very good job, in my opinion, of playing the game within the theme without you know, smacking you in the face with the theme. Uh, so this is a very good implementation of the Carcassonne system or design uh, with a biblical theme wrapped around it. I liked how you had different ways to score points, not just the finishing of cities or roads or fields or something like that. I enjoyed the temples, which are, are very similar to the cloisters or the... Uh, um, yeah, that's what they were called, cloisters in Carcassonne. Um, but I enjoyed, there was a difference there that it makes a cross instead of the entire thing being surrounded. Um, I liked that in difference. I liked the addition of the, the Ark of the Covenant where you could move it and uh, followers that get passed by or stopped upon get a point for having the uh, Ark pass by or land on their, their tile. Um, I believe that the artwork is good. It's not as good as uh, other Carcassonne implementations, but it is still um, aesthetically pleasing and it does fit well to the theme. Um, so again, I don't mean to say this too much, but this is a good thematic version of Carcassonne. If you have seen a copy of this, run back and get it. If you have not, try to find a copy. I think you'll enjoy it, especially if you enjoy Carcassonne. So that is the Ark of the Covenant. This gets one and a half thumbs up for me because uh, it's not in my regular wheelhouse of game. However, my family really enjoys Carcassonne. My wife loves it, and so we do play it often. So one and a half thumbs up for me, two thumbs up for family friendliness, and... Uh, We'll see you on the flip side, folks. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.